हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल ऑफ डॉक्टर गौरव वर्मा इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट इनफिनाइट सिंपल कंटिन्यूड फ्रैक्शंस वी शो दैट एवरी इनफिनाइट कंटिन्यूड फ्रैक्शंस कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड एज इरेशनल नंबर और वाइस वर्सा सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिफाइन इनफिनाइट रैशनल नंबर्स व्हाट इज इनफिनाइट कंटिन्यूड फ्रैक्शंस so any infinite simple continued fraction can be written in the form a0 plus 1 upon a1 plus 1 upon a2 plus 1 upon a3 so on so this is an infinite simple continued fraction as we defined in the previous lecture about simple finite simple continued fractions but it is a infinite so it will go to dash dash, dash up to infinity okay so any infinite simple continued fraction can be written in the form like this here uh, i want to tell you that a0 is a integer and a1 a2 are natural numbers so any infinite simple continued fraction can written as like this now we have already defined convergent in the previous lecture a0 a1 a2 is a infinite simple continued fraction then for any positive integer k this is called kth convergent and it is denoted as pk upon qk fraction if it is a p0 upon q0 then it is simply is equal to a0 if it is a p1 upon a, upon q1 it is simply a0 a1 so on so in this way similarly we can define complete quotients if a0 dash so it will be a0 a1 a2 so on if a1 dash it is a1 2 a2 3 so then it is called a1 complete quotient it is a2 complete quotient general quotient kth complete quotient is written like this so any complete quotient start from its subscript if it is 0 it will start from the a0 if it is 1 it will start from the a1 so there are some results that are very useful to study the infinite simple continued fractions theorem number 1 if it is any infinite simple continued fraction then odd convergence are always strictly decreasing even convergence are strictly increasing each odd convergent is greater than x or greater than each even convergent each odd convergent is always greater than each even convergent proof of these are already discussed in the previous lecture so here i will skip these proofs now this is a very important result every infinite simple continued fraction can be represented by a rational number or this result is also true for the reverse converse is also true here that is every irrational number can be developed as a infinite simple continued fraction so look at given let us say we have a given infinite simple continued fraction now we know that odd convergence strictly decrease and even convergence strictly increase it is a theorem result and we also know that each odd convergence is greater than each even convergence let us take convergence c0 c1 c2 so on so it is a decreasing sequence of odd convergent and it is a increasing sequence of even convergent so clearly from this fact we can say that odd convergents are decreasing and bounded below by c0 so as odd convergents are decreasing like this and bounded by c0 similarly so we can say that odd convergent is a this sequence of odd convergent is a convergent okay and let us say its limit is lambda similarly we can say that even convergents are increasing and bounded above by c1 so sequence of even convergent is also a convergent so it let us say it proceeds to new as n tends to infinity these are the limits of odd and even convergent so take difference of these two convergents and we know definition of convergent c2 n plus 1 will be equal to p upon q2 n plus 1 similarly c2 n take the its lcm and this is a result we have learnt about the previous lecture it will be equal to minus 1 raised to power highest power of n minus 1 so 2 n plus 1 is the highest power minus 1 so we will get here this one on simplification we get this one and we also know that the result q1 is always greater than equal to n so Q two n Q two n must be greater than two n and Q two n plus one will be greater than two n plus one. So their multiplication will be greater than this thing. We have multiplied both equations on taking reciprocal this thing and using the previous equation we get this thing. 
as n tends to infinity this becomes zero and its limit is lambda and its limit is nu so the difference will approach to zero it means lambda is equal to nu so odd invergent and sequence of odd convergence and even convergence approaches to same limit that is n tends to infinity both have limit is equal to x okay say it is x now we have find the value of nth convergent n tends to infinity is equal to x there x is a real number it cannot be rational number because rational numbers are for right simple continued fraction so rational number it can't be rational number so x is a real number so it only option remains that it will be a irrational number we as as we know that real numbers consist of rational as well as irrational numbers but here it cannot be rational number so it must be a irrational number so first part is proved now we will do conversely that x is a irrational number okay now we take greatest integer function box of x it will be a a naught it means x can written as a naught plus f naught that is f naught will be a any decimal number like between 0 to 1 so whenever you have to represent any irrational number as an infinite con uh, infinite continued section first of all you have to make its greatest integer function then separate its decimal part when its decimal part you have to convert it like a reciprocal always you have to make reciprocal of decimal part 1 over 1 plus f naught okay now look at further now now 1 over f naught will be greater than 1 so we will take this box it will be a1 so i can write 1 over f naught is equal to a1 plus f1 so it is not decimal part so write the value of here 1 over f naught since it is a decimal part i can make it reciprocal it so this is the process of making an infinite continued fraction now this will be greater than one so i will take its box function a2 so i can write it a2 plus f2 put value of f1 here and f2 is a reciprocal one over f3 so in this way we can make this process and it will be an infinite process this cannot be terminated so every x can be re represented as a finite simple continued fraction So it is a finite simple continued fraction, but finite simple continued fraction represents a rational number, which is a contradiction because x is a rational number. So this percent process cannot be terminated, it will be continued up to infinity. So very important result, examination point of view. Theorem number three: if two infinite simple continued fractions have the same value, they then they are identical. Let us take two infinite continued fractions. Let us say both are equal to each other. Now we know that any continued fraction lies between a naught plus less than a plus naught one. This continued fraction must lie between a naught and a naught plus one. Okay, so its integral part will be its integral part will be a naught. Similarly, integral part of this will be b naught. Since both are equal, so their integral parts must equal. So a naught equal to b naught r. Subtracting a naught b naught from both sides. And taking the reciprocal, we get this thing. Similarly, we will get a1 is equal to b1. Similarly, we can get a2 is equal to b2. So on, we will get each part equal to another. So infinite simple continued fractions must be identical. Simple result. Now, if two distinct infinite simple continued fractions converge to different values, it means that if we have two distinct infinite fraction then they definitely converge to different values let us say these are the two convergents converge to same value x if they converge to same value of x then they will be identical then each value will be equal to then it means that they are identical which is a contradiction we have a given two distinct so it means that they cannot converge to same value Now we have an example express root 2 as an irrational number. That is a simple continued fraction. How will we start? Let us take x is equal to root 2, scaring on both sides, then subtract minus 1 from the both side and making factorization, we get this thing. From here we get the value of x minus 1 and we get value of x is equal to this. Now we have this value of x. Now this value of x is same again used here. Put value of x here again. So it becomes 
like this okay so adding in these two numbers it will get like, get like this again put value of x here so we will get now put l value of x this value whole value so this is equal to x on putting here x value so we get the in this type of simple continued fraction 1 plus 2 2 2 2 2 so i can write like this so it is an infinite simple continued fraction it will never this process never terminate so 1 2 2 2 2 i can write 1 comma 2 bar so in this way we have learned about infinite continued fractions and how they can be represented by irrational numbers thank you very much